question twice. Can we get through the call? Yes. Uh, I'd like to open the meeting to citizens' participation. Is there, <clears throat> at this time, are there any citizens in the audience that would have anything to contribute, would like anything to say? Mr. White? I would uh, like to tell you that the hearings that were conducted in the cafeteria on the 17th and 18th, um, they're playing on WCTV. I can't tell you the exact time because it's spread out a little bit. Each session is a three hour long session. And there's also a FinCom copy uh, available as well. Okay, great. Great to see you. I would like to hear. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other comments from the public? All right, this time I'm going to close the citizens' participation. Oh, that's, I'd entertain and <coughs> I'm sorry. I, do I have to have a motion to close it? No, no, no motion no. open, motion to close the public oh. hearing. Public oh. hearing? Yeah. But you just had citizens participation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let me do a roll call. We did, we did, we did the roll call. We need a motion to open the public hearing. I'll make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Can I get a motion to close it now? Yep. Unfortunately. Go ahead. Let's reverse the order. <laughs> I motion we close the public hearing. All second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I'm going to give you a chance to make an editorial <laughs> comment. What? going to make an editorial comment you about like that after the hearing is yes okay we have well we don't have any public hearing on the budget because nobody's here so that 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 went quickly didn't it how about the town administrator's report <coughs> mr Solomon? that's me huh that'd be you <coughs> one for myself i should get some extra for Kelly. i got it okay i'll send it your way I have long arms. Yep. You? Yes, I have. Thank you. That's a comment on the revenue page, too. Uh, I know. <laughs> okay. Everybody have the handout there. Uh, this is a breakdown of what what I have available here. Some of it's from last night's selectmen's meeting. It's not necessarily on your agenda, but obviously it's something that would be good for you to have. The first uh, the first two pages after the cover would be the revenue and expenditure executive summary. Pages three through seven are the general fund expenditure report. Page eight, general fund revenue report. Page 9 and 10 are the Water Pollution Control Facility Revenue and Expenditure Report. Realistically, it's on 10, 9 is a cover. Uh, 11 and 12, Finance Department Organizational Charts. Then we're at page 13 is the Cherry Sheet Aid. And page 14 is taking away, so the Cherry Sheet Assessment. Is this a change? Oh, I'm sorry. Do you mean to... Yes, go ahead. Is this a change in the organizational structure? Yes, we would be, uh, be looking to for the second part to do to add a finance director. Um, I don't know how much we can really get into that. That was just more. It was presented to selectmen last night, and I wanted you to have the the similar copy. Is that going to is that going to involve a new position? I would be or in a, a current position. It would be an upgrade of a current position. Currently in our organizational chart, the town accountant is also considered the finance director and I'm looking to change that. Okay. And this was mentioned at the meeting on Friday. And, uh, and yes. Because you only have two positions in the county department. Correct. Brought up the okay. Try again, Jeremy. No, it's that fine. was a significant fact that came up. There was a reduction of a half a person in the county department, which was the position of assistant uh, town county. 
So you, you have an idea of what you're going to do. You just haven't made it public yet? Is that no, I didn't, make, I didn't make it public. I know it's not on the agenda, so I don't know. Really, on the TA report, uh, okay. but I think we should be fine okay. on there if you want me to speak to that. Yes. yes. Is there any of the other committee have any objections? No. No, that also uh, requires that the warrant article, doesn't it? It does. So, so it would be coming before us anyway. Correct. There'll okay. be a warrant article going okay. forth. So. Right, this is a structure where Mark Andrews started, right? I mean, he went up to replace Mark, and so this is a void created when you were advanced. No. This would be, this is the assistant town accountant would not be, be funded. That position would be eliminated. So my position, previous position was financial analyst. That one's also not being filled. But that doesn't have anything to do with the organizational chart here. If the head count stays the same as it was when you came on board. No, it's minus Am I wrong? One. No, we're losing minus one. Minus one? Yeah, you're actually, and if you're talking about uh, you'd be losing uh, one filled position and part of the budget process, you're reducing the financial analyst position, which is another position being removed. Well, originally it was. Right, so uh, there was a reduction, not a reduction, but a transfer, so now it's a reduction. We don't have much to analyze it anyway, do you, dear? For uh, money. Can oh, analyze oh, positive life. cash flow, I'm just... I'm I can analyze people if you want. We can <laughs> analyze <laughs> everything. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, well, we haven't had an opportunity to look at this. Um, no, that, that's what I'd suggest. I mean, you can always run through the eye on this, but I don't think it's fair to this, uh, to this committee to try and really consider this giving you a report tonight. I'd ask mm -hmm. you to read through it. Right. We'll have some of the um, some of the questions that you might have. It might even be easier if you want to, you know, cycle through through Kelly or through the right. chair some of the questions so that way you're getting them answered. I don't like to say I'll look into that or right. that, so Well um, how would the committee uh like to do this? Would you like to go to Kelly or would you like to read and submit some questions in our next meeting go over it or, or just get the email back? What's the committee's wishes? Yes, Mr. McDonald? I think it, it's actually to cycle them through either Kelly or yourself. Then we discuss some of the questions, I'm pretty sure, are going to be the same. So there's a consolidation aspect of that. Right. And then if a question wasn't asked or, or submitted, then we can ask it that night. But that gives us a chance, gives him a chance to look at some of the more pertinent things that before he has answers when he comes back here. And then whatever else we ask, he can right, I'll ask if that look you, and see. That you uh, send me an email and have Kelly on copy as well, or send Kelly an email and have me on copy. It doesn't matter. Regarding the, uh, the financial report. Do you have anything else for us? Yeah, the uh, cherry sheet is included in this. And has everybody in this committee signed up for the DLS alerts? Yes. Okay. Are you signed up for the DLS alerts, the, the department, the, the local services? They're the ones where if they're, the cherry sheets have come out and such, they will send you an email on there. Uh, I don't think I have. How do you sign up? I'll get that. Yeah. It, it comes on my FinCom yeah. email account. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, think I think it automatically, it automatically comes should. Through. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's so. there. okay. We've got some filtering weird stuff, stuff coming through there too. That's I, a, I thought you'd enjoy that. So. You thought I'd no. enjoy that? <laughs> <laughs> no, are you getting some spam and such? Or? Yeah. Okay. Some, some, I mean, I don't know whether because our names have gone to certain agencies or, or things like that, but um, I mean, I don't want these, you know, come join our seminar or blah, 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 blah. I, I don't know. I don't know where the stuff comes from. Really, yeah. What's your assessment? It might be just because we're on the town website and people can get the email that way. If you look at the two thirteen, thirteen versus the fourteen, what do you, you feel like you're comfortable with two fourteen? You have a town and yeah. email. Well, I'm sorry. Well, that's good. Sorry. Could, could we could we direct our questions to the the chair, Mr. McDonald? Yes. yes Thank you. All right. Go ahead. Um, you had something to say, Derek? 
Sorry. Oh, it's true. David um, had asked about what I feel about the 2014 numbers, which I okay. assume you're saying. Uh, the question is, how realistic are they? Uh, I would say, from going to the MMA conference, the secretary of the, the accounts finance was there, and his every response was, if you support the governor on his tax hikes, these will be real. So I would say you don't have uh, a very good chance on it. The other part of that is that in this, um, if you turn to the second page, you'll see our assessments are approximately 240,000. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's tough not to, to get a little morose over it because, you know, you, you hear there's these, these um, plans for, for, for extra revenues coming from Chapter 78 and local government and such, and you see it. But um, then the assessments go up so much, it's basically offsetting the whole thing. Uh, if you look on page 13, the, the local aid estimates, you'll see the schools increases by $166,950. The school choice receiving tuition which is of the, the increased $60,514 goes directly to the school, does not pass through the general fund, so that does not get budgeted. So that's not an increase to the budget. So once you take that $60,000 out, you're left with approximately $221,000. If you go to the assessments, the assessments are $239,485. So although the town received over $100,000 in additional aid directly to the general government, we will actually, we will lose $8,000 on that because we have to pay that. Sorry. So there's a... Uh, there's a real feeling of disappointment on that part. I'm hoping that there may be some of the next level, some of the assessments are are reduced and they can keep uh, keep forward on their projects. It's not to say that the governor's office isn't being thoughtful and trying to increase revenues, such as having Amazon with sales tax starting uh, starting in the fall. Um, but unfortunately, to this town. Ew, this really isn't a help. Mm -hmm. Also, if you look on page 13, the annual formula local aid, that is a new new form of aid. And unfortunately, that also works like the equalized valuation in that it's based off of your per capita income, but it is also based off of your land wealth. We are land rich, cash poor, simply. So it would probably be, uh, when you look at our, our per capita, we are in you know, easily the bottom third, and you can, you can fractionalize it even more, probably to the bottom, <coughs> bottom fifth, sixth. And then when you add the, the land value to it, we shoot up to about 278 out of 351. So. That's so that is where the... Uh, the aid is at on there. Um, so this isn't going to be our silver bullet this year. I would also point out that we're moving to the community, if I may, Madam Chairman, yes. that um, this choice sending information, that's the money we're paying out, this is up to be $111,000. Yet we're only receiving $60,000, which is a deficit of $50,000. We had we had sixty thousand dollars sitting in the school choice fund within the school uh, accounts, and it was used uh, to balance the transportation budget. So this current year is being impacted by the fact that that money was used in twenty twelve, oh. rather than carried on. Yeah, that's the interesting part of it. The school choice receiving is 246000 
the school choice sendings, 336,000, and then with the charter school, 274,000, we actually are sending back an assessment, $610,000. Um, the problem for the town as well is the, the revenues go directly to the school. However, the assessments, uh, you know, goes out of the general fund, and I don't believe we receive credit for that in the net school spending calculation of the in kind. So you look at almost a hundred thousand dollar loss of credit there. Anyone else have any comments here? Uh, on the subject of fairness, and this is coming down as far as the school aid, Chapter 7, and everything is concerned, that DL, uh, DLS has a, has a PDF on it which shows you by town what the school's budget, what they call the foundation budget, what the budget should be, all right, and then what the actual net school spending will be, adding together the town's contribution and the state's Chapter 78. All right, it's the most enlightening document because you're going to see what every town gets. And our, like our particular situation, here in Warham, we're getting 17.6 that we're putting in, and we're getting 12.4 from the state. All right, I'll give you some names. The Cushnet is, getting, is paying six and getting six. Attleboro's paying, they're putting in 32, the state's sending in 34. Hmm. Boston pays 616, they're paying, the state's sending in 209. The city of Rockland pays 37 million, and the state pays 158 million. Uh, Chelsea pays, they pay 12, the city of Chelsea pays 62. Chicopee pays 28, the state pays 57. East Bridgewater pays 10, the state pays 10. Everett pays 23, uh, the state pays 57. Fall River, 23, 100 from the state. Fitchburg, 15 versus the state's 44. Gardner, 7 versus 19 from the state. Greenfield, 9 versus 12. Uh, Haverhill, because some of these towns don't make sense, 36 mm -hmm. versus 44. Mm -hmm. Holyoke pays 9 million and receives 69 million from the state. Lawrence pays 7 million, gets 160 million from the state. Lemister pays 24, state gets 43. Lynn is 41 versus 133 for the state. Lowell's 39 versus 131. Malden is 33 okay. versus 47. I want you to please yeah. go get a hold of this list and look at it. This is what Jeff keeps talking about. What please is see the numbers. What, what is Wareham again? Wareham is we pay 17, 17 we get 12. We get 12. Now, so everybody if we else compare gets that, one. I want to compare that too because like Barnstable pays 44 and gets 9. All right, Gorn pays 16 and gets 4. Fallon so, pays 28 and gets 5. So what's happening is everybody on the Cape right, is getting low numbers. Marion's getting... They're paying three and getting a half million dollars. Mashpee's paying 14 and getting four. Mattapoise is paying 3.3 million and getting $700,000. What's happening is Southeastern Mass is, getting is, is not getting the state aid that the western part of the state is, is getting. Fall River, New Bedford? Where, where they oh, they're getting them. Yeah, he, no, he, 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 gave, he gave us Fall River. Yeah. 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 Fall, you know, Fall River was they pay 23 and get 100. Well, Frank, where'd you get that? that uh, this is an idea of the work that Derek brought up to you. Okay. All right. There's actually four documents. The very first one is a summary. It's an Excel spreadsheet. All right. And there's also an explanation of what each of the columns means, so you'll be able to see that all right, and understand it. The other thing that's important on this is the net school spending is the ex is the state's expected number, mm -hmm. and we're actually coming in over that number. It includes health care benefits and things like that as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. But some of these numbers were staggering. There's a cap of 85% in the calculation, and there's, there's towns that are hitting it, and actually the cities that are hitting it. So, yeah, that's the reason why we have so much trouble. Is, you know, the, well, the, the, the income here, like our per capita income here is no better than, I don't think it really is any better than the per income capita in places like Brockton. Thank you, true to Frank. What is that based on, Frank? Do they, in, in that website, do they give you how they come up with these numbers? This is the state. This I, is I understand state. that, but you were saying, you know, the town gives so much and receives so much. What is the basis of that? What's the That's formula what used? No, well, is there a formula for everybody the same, or is it just made up? No, no there's a, there is a fixed formula that's explained there as to how, you know, what the elements are. You, all right. It's what the elements are. Does it give you for each town? No, it doesn't. Okay. Well, it tells you the elements. Do you know it off the top of your head, or is it too complicated? No, I don't yeah. know. Okay. Yeah. That's the equalized value, EQV, equalized valuation, right. which is basically your, your land wealth. 
on there. So they're going to say, uh, when you think about it, the town, if you go to most parts, you have you have the normal normal homes, uh, probably in the uh, $200,000 range to, up to three. However, those houses that everybody tells you, you get those, those summer houses that are beautiful on the water, you don't have the people in there sending their kids, you should be making tons of money. Those are the ones that artificially skew the values in this town. And those are the ones that kill us in the state aid. So whereas you may receive an additional little bit of money on there, they are what killed the state aid. If you think about it, if $31 million is what the state expects us, in fact, uh, compels you to pay to the schools, and they're giving you us uh, $12 million in aid, well, if we got a 50-50 split, you're, you're talking about a, a $2 million swing, $3 million swing on there, two and a half, and um, what issues would we be speaking about? Mm -hmm. We'd still have some. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be what's, uh, it wouldn't be to buy textbooks and such. We'd, right. be, we'd be in better shape. So um, the, the simplest way to put it is it's, uh, it's an archaic, unfair formula that's hurting this town. And it sounds like many of the, uh, many of the southeastern Massachusetts communities. Who are in the same situation? Mm -hmm. right? This not also. This is. These are all state figures right, calculated by the state, I that. and they are and based on information also submitted by the towns to the state. All right. So I recommend you go and look at it. Well, and I'm going, come back. I'm going to. Yes. Let's come back with your questions. Yes. Go ahead. What is the the political uh, recourse for that? Where did you go to address My question. Put the pressure on? It's Who do you yell at? Who do you try to call? We could all sit here and stamp our feet and say it's not fair, but that doesn't, that doesn't do anything. Yeah. Right. Where do we go to help us? Is this our yeah, state yeah. rep? Is this our... Okay. Go ahead, Larry. Jeff Sweat has talked about this a number of times. I think with us, actually, too, as well, that it's not just a question of Wareham going to them. It's a question of these other towns getting together, and, and it's not going to be a popular thing. But go away, Larry. Well, they're going to go to the state, state house. house. That's where they're going to have to That's go. But, I want to know. but it's it's not going to do any good for just Wareham to go. It's going to take more than just Wareham. And I think Jeff, again, I sat down and told us that you know this is a group effort, and I think it needs to be a group effort because we are getting shortchanged. We're going to put together a town type of thing. So he seemed to um, he seemed to um, allude to the fact that there was change in the wind or some sort of. Um, group was going to be right. pushing right. Um, to get some of this to the legislature. So. Madam Chair, yes. I may respectfully disagree with Mr. Sweat and Mr. McDonald. Okay. All right. The carpool group, robust group that goes up and walks through that state house and knocks on every door when the legislators are there it has a tremendous impact. It can move legislation. We've seen it done. Right. And we don't have to talk for other people, we just have to talk for ourselves. Mm -hmm. so we can't afford to do it anymore. All right. We start with our own representative, visit her office. We start with our own center, visit his office, and go from there. And get them to have, give us an aid to go around. But somewhere along the line, bodies have face-to-face -face beats everything. You can write, you can send emails, you can make phone calls. But when it's face-to-face -face with two, three dozen people, that makes a huge difference in the state house. And quite frankly, we're concerned about where we don't have to talk about all the other town situation, right? And you know, we also have our school problems, which I think are somewhat unique. Unique, yes. All right, and the state is part of that problem too, as their agencies are sending, you know, kids from domestic families, etc. We have problems, and we're having to deal with. Them. Oh, Tom. Do do we have a, a, a uh, lobbyist? No. I don't think so, no. No. Well, I got it. Why don't we invite them, the state rep and the, our uh, senator, have a meeting with them, bring in all the parents, whoever else you want to bring in. I mean, that's going to give you a good idea of who's going to go to the state house and who isn't. If, if those are the place we start, let's start with that. No, but you started in, at the state house. You've got to go there. That's that's right. You've got to go there. You have to go I've there. You have to go I've been there. there. I can go again. I yeah. have a problem with that. <laughs> You have, have to go lunch. there, let them know you're coming, and let you know, so they know they have to be Please there and do a Send her an email, let me know when we're going. Around. Um, but, but there, it seems to me that the South Coast ought to have a lobbyist. 
who is knows who is connected in the state house knows what's happening in the state house and can communicate that to us and further can put forth our interests. Isn't that what our representative? Isn't that what our elected representative is supposed to do? Yeah. So yeah. We have, well, we have two lobbyists: but, the senator and the president. Don't you have Mark Pacheco and Susan? Different, right? Different, right? Different. 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 Different.
I think that's, uh, uh, see if she can come. If you, you know, we would set up a meeting with her. If, if, if she's not available, if um, you can set up a meeting with as many of us that can make it to her or whatever. We would just have to go well, to she, her office. Yeah, she has a monthly. Yeah, she does have a monthly, yeah. Month, but I she, want where she's 45 minutes. Give her a heads up. I give her a heads up. Okay. Yeah. And uh, let's, it, it, what, what you're saying is great. What you're saying is absolutely great. But it costs money. But it costs money. We can't even pay teachers right now. They're going to say. But you know what? If we can make if we can make a difference, and I believe I I, I honestly believe one person can make a difference. There's, there's no doubt about it. Um, let's 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 do it. Let's give it a shot. Let's let's move forward with this. And it can be something that we can we can spearhead and, and uh, maybe nothing negative can happen. Only positive things can happen. Pardon? Nothing. I'm good at making noise, Frank. Yes, Frank's very good at it. So isn't Mickey very good at it. Okay. Um, Mr. Sullivan. Thank you. Do you have any, uh, what's, your, what's your feeling on this? Uh, yeah, I think the, the community needs to get behind itself and advocate for itself. And... Uh, this committee is the leader for the community. That's what we're supposed to, supposed to do when it comes down to it. Uh, leaders are supposed to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the right thing for the community. Okay. I do too. All right. Do you have any other? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm sorry I'm not bringing rainbows and unicorns tonight, but um, you know, the, the rest of it's the information on there. We probably quickly go over, I'm trying to make sure that I include, there'll always be a separate document though, the Water Pollution Control Revenue and Expenditure Report. Yeah, and that's a simple one on page, page 10. Um, it's broken down like the others. And I think this is the format that I'll keep with if it's agreeable to the to the committee. The first part's the expenditure, and then you'll see a second uh, second box right. with the revenues on there. And sort of a similar thing, the FY12, same same period, year to date, and then the mm -hmm. other, the final one in the box should be FY12% budget on there. Excuse me, I'll make that correction. Uh, otherwise, on the water pollution control facility, you'll see the expenses. We're still trending higher, but again, that's because earlier in the year we had the major part of our debt service payment of over $1 million. So that will skew the expenses. Mm -hmm. uh, the personal services are within line at 36.4%. Obviously, the difference there is probably some overtime and, and any other such matters that, that become peak during the getting ready for the summer season. That's one of the interesting things about the water pollution control facility. Even though we've got a, uh, a smaller year-round population, it always has to be functioning and available for that large summer population. So. Okay. Um, do you have any information on when the audit will be completed? Do you Before we get to that, let me go back to the water pollution control. Because my understanding is this is a monthly report. This committee previously had asked for right. water pollution control to be in detail on a quarterly basis. And I, and I understand that right now we don't have, this is, has been sort of acceptable in the past because we haven't had the manpower to do anything. I do know the request has been made to try to bring some financial expertise into the water pollution control so we can understand what's being spent where and why. Not to question it, but as to understand what's happening. Mm -hmm. This is far too broad. This is a good measure, like the rest of the department. But I don't think this works for water pollution control, and I don't think that the two lines on the police department work either, on a quarterly basis. Uh, I'm reminded of no, the I, conversations we I, had before. So I agree with you. We might know, um, if we're going to restructure the finance department and possibly restructure some of the functions at water pollution control, then I think we should improve some of the reporting. So that people understand where they're, what's happening, uh, yeah, where the money's yeah. going. So you'd be looking for that one for after the restructuring, or 
before. That'd be no, 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 not till tomorrow, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> we won't need it till tomorrow, okay? Yeah, so, well, there has to be the man. I understand what it takes to get the work done right now. You don't have the manpower. In some instances, like, I don't have it with water pollution control. And so on a monthly basis, I see this as being fine. But I don't want to lose sight of the target that we talked about before, where we could look at two very, very key departments and see what was happening there, not as a sense of criticism, but to understand what we're doing wrong in the budgeting process, what we're not anticipating, etc. And it's, it really becomes important, especially when we're talking problems with leasing cars and getting capital equipment and, you know, where we're using it. And even on the labor side, it's over time, it's not, it's, there's a lot that's missing. I think we all know It's hard to look at, a, at two numbers, a wage number. It tells me that's great, but it does not tell me are we still on track with overtime? Are we still on track with our salaries? Do we have vacation problems? Mm -hmm. there's, a lot, there's a lot missing. All right. And I have to say that we do get a tremendous amount of detail out of the school when we ask them for their stuff. We do. So yes. I assume last year doesn't exist. We don't, we don't have year-to-year -year comparisons. Because he's got input this Am I reading this wrong? You're very astute. Huh? <laughs> For the, uh, this is worthless, frankly. On the water pollution? I would say speak to the committee members on that, because that's the form we've agreed to on for the top part. As for the revenue, you have year-to-date expenditures. You also have it compared to FY12. Where? I'm not seeing it now. The bottom part? Gotcha. Sorry. Need it. This needs to go on that board in front of me, so I know where the hell we're going. Page ten. Yeah, it's page ten. Yeah. Page ten. 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 If we had last year, we'd be a lot of help to us this year because we have an additional number of views that came from contract one and contract two. So even the percentage basis is, would get difficult. Mm -hmm. But it, not having a month-to-month -month flow in this thing is not a, it is, to me, is a handicap. I would say that's a long-term goal, but right now, I, would you be satisfied at least with quarterly? Because we have nobody in the water pollution control. Larry, right, you might be and right on that one. No, it's not just the police, it's an entire page. Yeah. Yeah, we're missing an entire page of this report, yeah. just for the record. I just said that I didn't see the police. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What's missing? The, the police. police. Uh, well, it's only two lines. Uh, no, well, I know, but it's still missing, and I think there's a municipal, no, no municipal name. You're missing an entire page on there. So yeah, there's an the, entire page the, missing. The yeah. Is the municipal maintenance there? Do you check? I didn't see it either. You've missed most of your, their, they're structured within their own things, such as public safety, mm -hmm. right. cultural, and such. So we're probably missing almost that entire public safety, which is some of the key departments in there. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. All right. Well. So was this a test, Derek? <laughs> I think it was. Yeah. You guys are okay. No, we passed. Yes, okay. All right. Well, That's you, unfortunate. Can you email us a completed, Derek? Yeah. Absolutely. That way we have a completed one? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Can I ask you? You certainly can. Hey, on a monthly basis, I don't really see a lot of problem with this, but if on a quarterly basis we had a little more expansion in it, then I, you know, I'd be comfortable with looking at certain <coughs> detail on a quarterly basis, but I, on a monthly basis, I, I'm not... Unless it's an alert or something like that. that we, right, and, you know, I, and I think he does a pretty good job, you know, I don't want to brag on it, yeah, but, uh, I think it is a good job of doing the management recap. I think he's doing an yeah. excellent, excellent mm -hmm. job. So we, we kind of know it just be helpful. Of course, he had those categories in the report. We would know what he was talking about. Yeah. Of course, he has us. That's why he's looking so well. Too. I, I'd also be quite, I'm not sure I'd be quite satisfied if we saw something in the report that needed mm -hmm. attention. It might be a single account or two or three accounts. We could just focus on those exactly. versus coming out with a monthly right. report. I mean, I think exceptional reporting is where the town needs to go. Right? That's like a term that 95% of people understand right now. Mm -hmm. yeah, I do. No, I think all the little 
I will uh, I will email that out. I apologize. Thank yeah. you. Uh, and here I thought I put something. Does anybody um, do you have anything else for us? Oh, uh, before we get. Oh, you want to do that? Yes, you did. But I'm getting used to it between the two of you <laughs> and Tom. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, the the audit letter and the uh, we're con you know obviously we're all concerned about what that management letter is going to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the uh, she saw Powers and Sullivan at the MMA there, so I would expect it within the next uh, next several weeks from them. They have everything that they need from us. Uh, I think what this committee, I'd like everybody to understand, probably shouldn't really say it on the air, but they dropped everything to help us set the tax rate on there, including taking assets away from other other towns and such. So. Uh, if this management letter is taking a little longer than normal one mm -hmm. here, and they're they're putting their assets for a little bit towards somewhere else, mm -hmm. I'm not going to pound on their door for it. So. Because they've they've been so they, they have been great uh, as far as guiding us through our 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 crises. They've stepped up with the manpower and such, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, and I think we're probably. The management report that we're going to get is probably going to be one of the clearest and with a lot of guidelines and such in that coming forward. So. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. Anyone have any questions regarding this? Any other business from you? Uh, no, these are, the, these are sort of the main items. So again, I will uh, probably search the ground. I'll go back to the office and email it out to you guys. No, so that you have it tonight. You don't have to do that, no. honestly. Just, just get it to us tomorrow. I mean, was there a specific reason we were getting this done right away? Enterprise funds. I don't know. We should. I've had one funds. for a long time. Who's this one? <laughs> oh, Frank asked to have it put in the package. Okay, I just didn't know yes. whether it was some sort of surprise I didn't hear about, but okay. Is this the first time you've seen the Enterprise Fund? Uh, this, this I, I just was curious as to why it was, why we suddenly had one in our package. That's oh, funny. I think it's coming up probably. Yeah, All right. I don't know we'll both be surprised, Bonnie. Derek had something up his sleeve I hadn't heard about yet. No, no it wasn't part of his package. Oh, okay. <laughs> Right. Derek, uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Go home and see your wife. I have one last question. When will we see the first update on the budget? Or will we see anything before we get the time meeting? Yeah, you'll right. see something. Are the warrants closed? My understanding is well, the, the, the warrant really, that's what I think people need to understand as well, so I appreciate that, is that the warrant is a warning. It's, you know, it should have all the information based in there. So all you're really doing with the warrant is saying you're going to speak about a certain topic. So when people say the warrant doesn't have all the information in it, how can you do that? That's, that's not the proper spot for it. Um, and I'm sure everybody here understands that. But yes, we'll probably receive budget updates. I know that uh, the school committee, my understanding, will be voting on a budget number tonight so your your next budget update will be with whatever deficit is voted when would we you know, check with you when would we expect to see an update of the total budget from december 15th I mean, we're going to have some kind of a schedule where you'll provide us with some updates or uh i wouldn't say there's going to be a schedule but now we have the fy14 numbers for the cherry sheet mm -hmm. we've got the we'll have the school committee's updated number so I think you can we can put one out there. Uh, the major change will be in the state aid and in the school number. Okay. Okay. So I would think over the next week I should be able to email out just the updated numbers in mm -hmm. there. Um, but I don't believe it'll be anything that you wouldn't know, you wouldn't know if you didn't. Yeah, look at it yourself or understand what the schools put in there. Yeah. 
Madam Chair, yes. to Fred, are you asking what are we? What is this body going to yes. debate on the budget? What is? Uh, we when will we receive our updates so we can so we can then discuss it and, and go mm -hmm. along with it? And, uh, we're we're very sympathetic to this your situation. We're very appreciative of all the department meetings and understanding of that. But um, the big question is what comes out of the school committee tonight, and what's the impact of that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. So, I, so, yeah, so at some point, week, next week would be the right time for us, for us to roll up our sleeves yeah. and yes, to start, start to start start really picking it apart. Okay. And it might be okay. worth it if Salvia, <coughs> Mr. White, there has a copy for for the fin of some of the DVDs. That might be worth doing a little homework for the, for the, the next budget session. Right. You can't give orders to us. I know. Sorry about the issue. Yeah, I'd give, love to have been there. What, at the, oh yeah, are you, are you finished with your journal? Oh, no. Um, yeah, that's yeah. actually this. Was your ex Yeah, so we, I just want to make sure you may want oh, to. Because yeah. we should take one for Dave. Yeah, my oh, so my thought is, I don't want uh, us to sort of have two different documents. Um, yeah, we want to destroy these, right? Yeah, so why don't we, because I remember in the past we've had issues, well, this is, which <laughs> one are you speaking about? So, right, right. I've got, um, you know what, um, I'm just going to put a big void no. on mine, because right, I've got perfect. notes on it. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, Should you date these things? These sheep? What's up? Did they date them? Um, yeah, the, um, not each sheet, but the sheet. Yeah. Are you just taking the first number or are you going to repackage the whole thing? I can repackage the whole thing and email it out and you can look at it via email. If you want to keep the other items on there for your yeah, it's friends. Yeah, it's email update. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, my formula, I'm going to try to figure out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you very much. And we'll look forward to your new copies. You posted for the new town accountant? Yes. And is that, where does that stand? Where does that process stand? That you're probably looking mid February, it would close on that. So, April? Possibly? Um, mid February close, usually take the, uh, see what you have on there. Uh, try and have a meeting to bring it down to about uh, three candidates on there, and then uh, we figure that's taking towards March. So yeah, April, April be a fair estimate on that. Get them just some time for town meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Not if we want to keep them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, thank Before you. Before the town administrator leaves, the governor announces the April. 30th would be the primary. Oh, June yeah. 27th. 25th, I June 25th will be the actual election. So we have about 70,000 in the reserve account. So we need to keep that in mind because Mary Ann Silver will be back for those money. Probably oh, that's the right, too. The important factor is, is that we only have 15 days after June 30th to make any adjustment there or any transfers. So they need to keep that in mind as well. Actually, for budgeting purposes, it works out perfect. I think it was concerned that we'd have to throw it into next year. Mm -hmm. It'd be this year. We do have the money. All right, we just have to keep in mind of what I think we only have seventeen thousand dollars left in the reserve. Yeah, I think yes. yes. When, did, when is this? April thirtieth. April thirtieth. When is this? April thirtieth. And I'm sorry. That the, June that 25th. Is, Thank you. That's the first Tuesday in April. I'm not sure what the date is mm -hmm. on that. But we've got this. We've got the state senate. We couldn't gang them. Put them together. No, you have to because it's a state. The, the state senate selectment is by charter. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. It was April 30th. In June 25th. June 25th. Thank you. The town election is like the fourth of April or something like mm -hmm. that. There's nothing you can. You can't change that because it's by. I believe that's by charter. Mm -hmm. yeah, it, it is. Costs it is. Us 15 grand. 15 grand. Mm -hmm. It's going to cost us fifteen thousand per per. Right. Yeah. So I mean, but if you had them, if you if you had them at the same time, 
can. You can yeah. save fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah, you can. Which is, I mean, it, it doesn't float our boat. But well, the charter says we have if to we have. Could, if we could cut out, uh, save uh, fifteen thousand a couple of times, we would all be ecstatic. So. I think John Kerry should pay for it. I think John Kerry should pay for it. He left. Take it out of Patrick's decorating budget. He gets every year. Let's not go there. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Have a good night. You're in your ninth month. How's this? everything going fine? Yes, everything's going well, well. Thank you. Oh, good. Everything's going well. Good. Yeah. So. Is there anything kind of we can do to help in any way? Thank you. We hit 37th week was Sunday, so it's now officially uh, any time now. Any day. What's the due date? Uh, the February 22nd, but they said now it's essentially full term. So. Terrific. So I've only got a few more weeks to use the excuse of fake labor. So. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Thank Good you. Night. I knew you were smarter than you came across. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Dirk. Okay. Does anybody want to ask the CPC if they want to? Well, they said they'd, they'd be over. I'll, I'll go oh, oh, no, it's okay. They said they'd come over and we'd fit them in if we can. All right. Yeah. I, um, I don't think we'll work. So we. Okay. Um, General discussion. Meeting. Okay. Any general discussion with the school budget? Well, they're voting tonight, Donna. Pardon? They're voting tonight. Yes. Oh, that's budget. what Frank says. <coughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, it's on there. It's posted on the agenda. So, I, go I, ahead. I got the opinion after, or the, that's my opinion after talking to a couple of them that they're not going to back off their number. And if they do, it's not going to be very much because, Tomorrow. because there are some, uh, you know, Last year or this year, I guess. They shouldn't back up. Anymore. Well, but the point is, if they don't back up their numbers, it's a problem, and they understand that as well. But I think the way the year went with the debt exclusions and the overrides and, and some of the things that are happening, it, it just uh, I don't see them backing off their number, which is going to put town meeting into an interesting severe place. pressure on finding a million dollars. Right. There's just there's not a million dollars in that budget. And the school transportation, there really isn't any talk about okay, No, there's, there's stuff on school transportation. Oh, okay, go ahead. Uh, but then also on the town budget, we also have to remind them to give it to us and look at the library. Right. Exactly. And we know that it's not a situation that can continue with the police department with its cruisers. All right, that becomes a serious problem. And then there's also the matter of the radios, right, which has to be worked out as far as nobody would ever. But you know, make no mistake, they sent 14 radios back to my family. So the minimum, those would have to be replaced. Is it yours? That's his. I know. <laughs> <laughs> he might want it. He might want it, yeah, but he forgot it. He forgot your apple. So those are things we have to be concerned about in the budget, for sure. Mm hmm. I'm surprised, guys. I know it's yours. I don't know where those numbers are going to come from. That's not going to be. What um, what exactly do you think we're going to be facing with the cruises at, at town meeting? You think they're just going to bring in an article for new cruises? No. How can you? I mean, you, you know, the lease is not where you, you, know, you buy them. It's a debt number. You're just still in a situation where, actually, in this particular case, the way the bonding works in the state, you could postpone the first payment the next year. You bond it. You buy them. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. That's the best way to go. I also understand that we've lost one supervisor vehicle. It was totaled. Mm -hmm. All right. By the insurance company. So, I mean, that's definite. You know, mm -hmm. that's our, we may have the, the most well-paid beat patrolman in the entire state by the time we're done. We don't even drive around. Go ahead, Tom. Um, the lease is up at the end of three years, and then what is in, uh, how do we buy them? I mean, do we buy them for a dollar, but the question is what, what are the, what's their condition, and what are the maintenance costs? What well, they, they I mean, they're at 80,000 miles, and that. everything well, I, else is I at 160,000. But 120,000, I thought, did you see the... No, the six, up? he gave us, it was a list, and yeah. it was in the 80s. All right, one and, of the other things that you have to consider with cruisers, though, unlike your car, a cruiser is an idle. 
for many hours at a time. So there's also the engine wear and tear of, you know, they don't turn them off and restart them. Well, is spending a dollar for one better than not having any? Well, of course it is, but the, you know, there's going to be repair bills too, that's what I'm saying, okay? We have to, and that's not in the budget either. There's going to be a cost of keeping them repaired. Well, I don't have a lot of sympathy for them when they're there's $200,000 of the Quinn bill that we've been paying for three years. Um, and they want to negotiate that and they're crying for having radios and no... Two millibrators in every car when we needed, huh? when no we needed, when we needed radios. That, yeah. That's a little bit Go ahead, Claire. The, the, if I was right, there was originally five cars that we bought. Six. Six. Well, there's five cars that we bought on the three-year plan, the lease plan. Am I right? It was five. Okay. No, there's there six leases and a supervised vehicle. I think it was seven total. Well, here comes the CPC. There was five, and then there was three that were done separately. I think no, you're right. I think it was three. It was five, three. And five and three. I think it was seven and three. Okay, well, whatever seven it is, the, the it's my understanding that at least two of those cars are no longer functional cars. Right. The three are still under the lease agreements. They won't expire until right. the five. Right. The five before them is that the seven? It's seven cars. Okay. Whatever it is, there's at least a couple of them that are not functional anymore. They've been in accidents or totaled or whatever. So whatever we buy for dollars is, is basically parts. The, the problem is we have, we have had and we don't now have a replacement plan for those, those vehicles. And again, you know, whether or not I have any sympathy for it or not, that's not really my issue. My issue is I want my, our, our police officers just like I want our children in safe equipment. And we don't have any way to do the buses, we don't have any way to do that, and that's simply just not acceptable. So we've got to, somewhere along the line, something's got to give. And when you're looking at a budget deficit coming from the school side, and you're probably looking at a little bit of a budget deficit coming from the town side, it's going to become an issue of, it's going to take everything we have just to operate in this town. And, and we're not, still, we're creating more problems going down the line because we don't have the capital to, re to fix or repair the stuff we, you know, our library needs a new roof. I, I mean, I could go on. We don't, we, we had an opportunity to look at a new school and everybody said no. Well, you know, we are building this community. We're tearing it down right now. And police cars are, are necessities. These guys need police cars. Right? It's as simple as that. But we don't have any police cars. We don't have any money to, to do them. So, it's a very frustrating thing for me, and it absolutely is frustrating. But here's where we are. This is where we are. we got to figure out what we do, how we exist with what we got. So uh, if, you got, if, you, if we don't have the police cars and we don't need the policemen, we cut the, we cut, the budget gets cut to what we what is survivable. And the fact that we're borrowing money to fix a damn roof in the high school shows you just how desperate it is. Yep. If we don't do, put money into maintenance, it's been four years to try to get the, the old town hall painted for crying out loud. Yep. I mean, it's ridiculous. I, that's what I just we said. Need it, we, we need a, a different way to manage this community. It's got to come from the, the and leaders. it's got to be more efficient. Also, on, the cruisers, on the cruisers, we need more information as well. We have the mileage, but the mileage alone is not, yeah, doesn't no give you the ability to truly you know, understand the condition of those cars. So, you know, yeah, you're right. It's frustrating because we get things that you know we put against our yards to put. But here we sit and we wring our hands all the time. Right. We're not. No, you're 100 percent correct. We're not Go getting ahead. at it. Right. And, and the clarification is, it's not their cruises. It's our cruises. They're, yeah. they're town cruises. They're town right. equipment, and we have that obligation. Um, just my question is, why are these vehicles that have been totaled? Why? Are, why doesn't insurance replace them? What happens? Well, the insurance insurance yourself well, insured. Insured. Totally. You yeah. don't get the full amount. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. You know, it's three years worth of uh, there's wear and tear on it. That's where the problem comes. Like the pickup truck we had it was, yeah, it was they totaled it. You know, and it was only worth about nine thousand dollars. But you're not going to. So we get it. cash. We get some cash value, not, but it's not going to buy us a. No. The vehicles are not insured at replacement value. No. Too expensive to do that. Thank you. All right. Um, Madam Chair, through you, can I ask Frank uh, to repeat something you said earlier? Certainly. You were saying, what would be the best way you had mentioned about the vehicles, about putting the payment off for a year by bonding it? Would you explain yeah, that to I mean, me? It, no, you don't want to put it. In. What can happen is that the way the bonding situation works, depending upon how John is able to do it, mm -hmm. there's always, it could happen. All right? Doing that 
I'm 1,000% against that. Okay. Right? You should now. never go out in the first year and find a way to postpone it past the first of the year. Um, you, is there any other way that you feel that you think might be better than? Is there any backdoor to this? No, there's no backdoor. No back you know, a capital lease is just another way of financing a purchase. Mm -hmm. Because in the end, you're buying it for a dollar. No, I understand all that. I didn't know how to move on with new vehicles. The, the bottom line is, you're going to have to, if we're going to have to get cruisers, we might end up having to lose staff. You got it. That's, that's it. That's, that's the only place you're going to go. You the, we have never been this far. We, we've never we've never taken it that extra step. We're here now, I think, Dominic. I think we're here, and I think the choice is going to be cars or staff. I'm not, I'm not sure. I will say, though, understand that a lease, because of the purchase agreement, you know, the Chapter 31 of the Massachusetts, contracts can only run three years, so the lease is three years. So you're paying for the car for three years. If you buy the car, you can bond it in five years. Mm -hmm. So it costs you less per year. Exactly. All right, but I see. you know it's also a different number going to town meeting asking for you know a hundred thousand dollars. And the reason why we went to the leases, if you remember right, was there was grant monies available. Exactly. So even when you look at the cost of the cars for the first term, and you know, we all got three cars for the same amount of money. And, and there was the a beneficial maintenance because agreement. one had one had a grant oh, oh. to it, and the other didn't. It was just oh, bailing time. out Chrysler and Fiat. That's where I was just going to deal. That. Can we please? <laughs> can we please go for the chair, Tom? Yeah, I have a gentleman <laughs> waiting over here to speak. <laughs> Well, it's Larry. It's not a gentleman, but it's Larry. Go ahead. You're right. And what I was going to say earlier, I probably shouldn't have said anyway, so I'll, I'll say it again. Well, horse shit. <laughs> we, we were against this wall two years ago, and we decided we'd start robbing from this and pulling from that, and now we're worse than we were before. We, we have nothing we're going to do this year is going to fix it. It ain't going to be fixed. We have to make tough decisions, which I agree with you, but we need to have a plan going forward so we don't have to continue to sit here every year and debate this. Let's, let's, you know, we need some direction from, well, let's just, from where we're, the leadership. We need them to say, hey, you know what? We're not going to do this anymore. Let's put 45% in the score, 50% in the school, let's put this much in the police department, and they live with those budgets. I agree with you. But that doesn't stop us from trying to figure out a way to generate more revenue, doing all these other things. We need directions. But let's say that we're just now in this situation. We've been in this situation for two years, and we've been we've been basically. Uh, well, you know what I said earlier. That's exactly what we've done for two years. Too, Larry. It's been huh? long. It's been long. Been long too, Larry. Hands on it. Well, <laughs> well I, I can honestly tell you, until two years ago. Well, that, now we've been in this situation before, but the, dis, the distinct difference is that we took money from, or we I understand. Bar from the health care trust, trust yeah. we, we made some side deals, and we, we basically have been avoiding the problem for two years because nobody wants to address it. we got to address it. And it's, we're time gonna, to, it's time to address it right we're now. We're going to have to address and it. And I think, I think the chief's going to address it, and the, the uh, superintendent of schools is really going to address it. I believe Mr. Sullivan has addressed it. And I think we're all going to have to learn to live within our means. If you don't have it here, you're going to have the only place to get it is this place or that place. So we're going to have to live within our means. That's basically it comes down to the bottom line. And if they want to continue to have, you know, continue to keep the Quinn bill and fund the Quinn bill, that's going to be hey, so be it. So be it. It's not our decision. It's that they're going to get a certain amount of money, and they're going to have to find out how they're going to live in it. They can cry. They can say they need this. They can say they need that. But the, the, the town spoke very loud and clear last town meeting. We're not going to pay for any overrides or debt exclusion. So they're gonna, we're going to have to find a way. And I truly believe that the only one that has been really really understanding it fully is, 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 is the town side, Mr. Sullivan. I mean, he's made his cuts, and everybody else is going to have to make theirs. Does anybody else have anything to say on this? 
Alan, I, Go ahead. I, you know, I, let's not say that the school hasn't cut. The school yeah. has cut. Of course they They've have. They've cut 24 positions in two a years. Absolutely. And they're getting down to the point where, you know, we saw in the meetings that we had when it comes to the number, you know, what the classroom sizes are, et cetera, they're at max. They're at max. It's, you know, so to come by and to say, well, you know, we need to cut a million dollars out of the school budget. We're going to lay off X number or something. I'm sorry. That's going to impact class sizes. That's, I mean, you're really talking beyond dollars here. I agree. And that's, and that's the problem. Now, one of the things that I would propose that we do as part of our budget process is we need a couple of executive sessions to discuss labor. You know, coming in and trying to discuss these budgets for both the town and the school budget, and being told I can't discuss that because it's labor negotiations, exactly. et cetera. No, we should have executive discussion, uh, sessions to discuss those items, and quite frankly, under the circumstances, by the bylaws, we have the right to say you have to come. And that's where I stand now. And if somebody wants to say, well, no, we don't like, no. What do you mean you have to come? Uh, we have the right to investigate and the, 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 uh, the governance and management of any department in the town. And we're at the point right now where the backs are against the wall. We're going to be expected to make recommendations, and we don't have all the information. I agree. So it's time that we just flat out said, yes, I think the idea of getting together with the selectmen is a very good idea. Only we will also make the executive session as part of it. Absolutely. So that we can talk about some of these labor issues. And some of these issues are not over yet. We have some serious problems here. Okay? And not only when I say we should have those, we should have a legal counsel here, both labor and town counsel. So that we don't have any, well, we'll get back to you on that later and we never hear anything before town meeting. All right. Let's. Do you want to try? Yeah, you want to try and do this for next week? One at a time. Well, you're gonna have. You're gonna have to. Well, I know. The time Thanks frame is within two weeks. We should have the first of the two meetings, and I think the first one is with the selectmen. And there are other issues <coughs> besides the budget to discuss. What points you brought up? All right. That we don't have a clear definition. And some think that we do have a clear definition. However, there's a lot that's foggy about that bill right now. Mm -hmm. All right. And that issue has to be settled. Because town only authorized, town meeting only authorized a certain amount. And the question is, can negotiations by the selectmen override the will of the town meeting? And I think that's a major issue for this town going forward and dealing with these budgets. All right. It, it's, not a, it's not a silver bullet, but it right. certainly is something in the right discuss, direction. Right. We can't discuss any of this because they sit there and say it's a negotiating item. We're negotiating it. You can't talk to us about it. Bull. Okay. All that says is we haven't had the courage, and I as chairman have the courage at times, to sit down and say we're going to have an executive session and you will attend. All right. We're at, as Mr. McDonald said, we're at the point we have to do things extraordinary. All right. This is where I'm at right now. I agree with you. We have to have them in, and I'd like to have somebody in next week. Next week, I am just going to be down from, I'm going to be down. I, if I can make it to the meeting, that's fine, but I would appreciate it if. Well, Mr. Heath, would you would you uh, share, take this on? As vice chair, I can step up. Okay, would you please step up and and and, and help get this facilitated for next week? And um, I will uh, I will let the board know in the next few weeks if maybe it's maybe it's time I should step down. Maybe I, you know I don't know if I can handle it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's what we're well, well, I just wanna I, I just wanna I don't want things to go undone and I, I do know next week I'm we can put that out you know oh. that's why you have a vice chair on the clerk. exactly okay oh, great. You can, guys. I, can I just say this Certainly. that's why you have all of us well, you, exactly. you can delegate whatever well, you want and, and we'll do it because it's not fair for you to have to step down and I think it's time if you need us will you use us well let's let's machine let's see what we can get Frank see what we can get scheduled for next week on the docket for next week. Does everyone in agreement with that? Yes, ma'am. And definitely, we want to include on that an executive session. Yes. Want to vote on discuss labor issues? Pardon? Can we vote on it? We don't need a vote. Well, there you go. Okay. We don't need a vote. All right. Petition that we need to put on as an agenda item. Before you go to your next article, can I ask Mrs. Slavin to come up and give us? Thanks for your patience. You know, it's escaped me. I know the CPC what? had something that had to come before us to vote on. This isn't CPC, um, excuse me, um, Sandy Slavin. Um, 
Just tell me. Yes. Um, municipal maintenance has submitted a grant request for uh, a recreation study. By Board of Selectmen policy, we need the um, ex approval of the FinCom and BOS before we submit any article to CPC. I'm late. The article was submitted to CPC before I got my written approval by the BOS and FinCom, and I'm here to ask for your uh, support of this article. The article is from Municipal Maintenance. It was originally submitted for 20000 and it was up to 30000 by the uh, Community Preservation Committee. It is a um, request to do, uh, I'll read, to create a comprehensive study of the existing town-owned playgrounds and recreation sites in the town of Wareham to provide a real, real, rehabilitation and maintenance plan for all town-owned playgrounds and recreation sites to recommend, to reco and to recommend where new recreation sites can be created. With a change in CPA laws, CPA funds can now be used to rehabilitate uh, re uh, playgrounds regardless of what funds purchase the land. It used to be a restriction that CPA funds could only be used for playgrounds on CPA purchased lands. That's no longer the case. And since that law changed, it felt that this would be a good time to ask for some funding to complete a comprehensive study and recommendation for our sites. We've got uh, 12 playgrounds, three school uh, recre uh, playgrounds, and three recently purchased open space uh, open space areas that have had nothing done on it. So this study would say, where are our playgrounds? What can we do? What is it going to cost us? What's the recommendations? And uh, use that as a study because um, with the new change in law, uh, community preservation committees have been asked to uh, do a study before funds are passed out to do any particular area for rehabilitation. So this is our study. What do we have? What do we need? What is it going to cost us? And when I look at three open spaces, we've had Bryant Farms since 2004 and done nothing with it. We recently have the um, Westgate property off Paper Mill Road. Wouldn't that be a great place to do a, a kayak launch? Use CPA funds to make that happen. Um, we also have the Ahern property, which is on a bluff overlooking the river, a great place for picnic areas. So looking at a professional to come in and give us an evaluation of what we could do with our open land, our open space, and our playgrounds. And so by Board of Selectment policy, I'm here for municipal maintenance looking for support for this article. I'll make a move. Go ahead, Bonnie. I have a question. Um, I haven't read it all into the criteria for the new for the new criteria concerning playgrounds and things like that. But municipal maintenance is um, requesting CPA funds for uh, refurbishing of these areas or the study. A study, a study, to, study, study to, to make that. a recommendation is the best way to make our playgrounds safe. Okay. Um, my question is, so even if we go ahead with a study and it's just, you know, the study decides, well, you know, you need X amount of dollars to do this, this, and this, and this. And that means we miss somebody, maybe it has to go back to CPA to actually get the money from CPA, if correct? It, if it's, it doesn't have to be municipal maintenance, it could very well be um, Indian Mound Beach Association. Okay. Or the, fam or the group that uh, oversees it has to come from maintenance because they are their <coughs> owner, but they can be co-sponsored with a local group that would also, to me, give them more responsibility or ownership of maintaining or watching over the site. But because it's town-owned land, municipal maintenance or a, a department in town must submit the article, but it, can't, but it can be in conjunction with an independent entity. Okay. Well, to get to my actual question, what I was leading up to is, after we refurbish and recondition or decide what's going on, what happens to regular maintenance? That's part of the discussion. CPC cannot pay for it, and that would be part of the decision as to whether or not to rehab any of these playgrounds, is whether or not we can afford to maintain them. Which is why, by working with a local organization, who's to say they can't come in and mow the lawn? you know, or, or watch over the site. 
but that's part of the decision as to whether or not we put funds into rehabbing Indian Mound Beach playground, uh, whether or not we get support from the local entities. But that's above and beyond the study. That would be the next grant request <coughs> discussion. Okay. Yes, maintenance is, a, maintenance is a big concern because right now they are mowing all these sites. They do mow the fields. So that's nothing new that they, the maintenance doesn't already do. But I'm looking at maybe we put cameras. I don't know. We've got vandalism. I know. This is just a study okay. where we are. I want to thank you for the initiative in doing this. And um, I worked briefly, got a chance to look over the materials. My husband um, was working with the Open Space Committee um, with a little pressure on, from his wife to get there so that the Open Space Committee could have a quorum to have an open space plan. And some of the materials he came home with was how much land the town actually owns. And we spent the better heart of part of my hip recovery driving around and looking at some of these areas, trying to get a handle on just this. And it's a little bit daunting. We have a lot of land that we don't use, underutilized, there's no signage, there's no availability for it. This is just a way to get our hands around it to really understand what we have, what the possibilities are, and where we should direct our resources. And so. to be honest, this grant request was supposed to come from open space, but we couldn't get a quorum to vote on it. So it was suggested that it come from municipal maintenance. It makes no difference. It's still coming from the town. Can we put the plug out that you can't get a quorum because we need bodies to apply? I have been committee? trying that. I've got. Last time I spoke to this in front of the board of selectmen, I did mention that we had three openings, and if they were interested in recreation, this could be a good fit for them. I've also. I think I've got somebody else who might be coming on open space, but quorum is tough. Tony, I think you make a motion that. Uh, we accept the uh, grant application. That we that we that we approve. That we approve the municipal maintenance request for this grant or this money from CPA. Second. Yeah. Not, do, it's our oh, second for discussion. Do you have a? It, it, I don't know the who the professionals are in town, but it, you can't get some pro bono work from architects and professionals that would put together the bones of what you're looking for rather than spend 30,000 bucks. I mean, you got the $30,000. I'm not saying that. that it's, it's possible. It's, we can put out an RFP and maybe someone can come in and say, hey, I'll do it to you for five bucks. But I, we have to put the RFP out there for the study. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't know to answer your, I don't know who to go to. To answer the question, there were the couple that worked on the Open Space Committee did a tremendous job in, in putting, it's actually available on the town website as to what we have for open space areas, but I don't think you have a grasp of how much is actually involved. Um, and it encompasses different areas. As Sandy said, there's, there's kayak launch, there's playgrounds, um, there's picnic areas, so it's really widespread. So I think it would be very beneficial to have a comprehensive plan. And it's low, relatively low dollars for and, getting a handle on it. And apparently there is a study by, done by a group, a committee called Fields and, Fields and Grounds Committee formed in 1995. It was mentioned when I was in front of the Board of Selectmen that they did a study. We've been unable to find it. But if there is a study, we can tack it on to what we put out there and have a professional update it or include it at all so the you sites don't have to we want. For bucks yet. You don't oh, no, I can't do anything okay. until I can get this approved. And it's going to be max of 30000 I'm hoping to use far less than that. Wasn't, wasn't Chris Smith and Jimmy Franklin on that? I remember Mr. Franklin, but I think his expired. His, if you go on the website, the, the members of Fields and Greens, Fields and Grounds, some of them, they're, uh, they ended in 2011 and they're still listed as a member. They haven't met for a year and a half. But I mean, maybe we could try and get a hold. I, I know the two of them, they might the have something. The moderator has gotten hold of the chair oh, and trying to find the study. It has not been forthcoming yet. But if we, there's a study, it can be the foundation of what we send out there and okay. it cost us less money. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right, we have a, okay. What are we asking to? to I don't understand the motion. I'm the motion is to approve, uh, she needs approval from the Board of Selectmen and from the FinCom. To do what? To, to, to apply for this grant? Yes, to submit the grant. Yes, retroactively. 
It's a board of selectmen Applying policy. For a grant? Okay. Yeah, that I even apply for a grant, I must get approval ahead of time. Okay. I'm late. That's, right. That's exactly. Just yeah. the, just you're, not, you're not approving the grant, just the, right. the, the ability to submit it. To submit. Okay. Just so to be clear on that. Barring <coughs> no other dis further discussion on the matter, I'd like to take a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Municipal maintenance. No. Didn't we want them here for where for you warrant to No, well, uh, not today we didn't. Well she's here to no. discuss our schedule and the ability to submit the grant. Mrs. Slavin. Yeah, okay. Mrs. Slavin, before you run, uh, yes. we have another question. We haven't had the opportunity to discuss anything with CPC about the um, possible warrant articles. Warrant article any warrant articles coming up? We finished our meeting this afternoon, this evening, in which we have voted on the uh, articles to be submitted and we have drafts. We have just approved the drafts, so our articles, motions, and explanations are now completed. Okay. Did you want a quick overview? Well, no, that was... <laughs> go ahead. No, this was my pet peeve, so I'll go ahead and take the blank bar. Okay. My, my, my thing was to, to issue you, you at the CBC an open invitation that what happens is, all of us don't like keep keep track of everything going on all the time. So we don't we don't end up hearing about your projects until we get a, a proposal in the mark and then we go, what is this? And it just seems like we're always cramming it in at the last moment. Well, I'll be okay. happy to give you an overview <laughs> of, of, of without discussions on on the particular articles. I'll be happy to give you uh, what's mm -hmm. out there. There's five of them. Okay. The first one is our reserve set asides. Um, we expect to have uh, just over 700000 in FY14 estimated revenue. So the 10% set aside for the three reserves, open space, recre open space, affordable housing, and historic preservation. And the 5% set aside for um, admin, that's one. Number two is the debt payment for um, Tremont Mail and Bryant Farm. How much is that? A lot. Oh, no, okay. We'll uh, it's, it's just over yeah. 7000 for Bryant and uh, just under 100000 for Tremont Nail. So I think it's a total of 107000 yeah. yeah. for the, the two payments. Number three is this $30,000 for the recreation study. Number four is a $50,000 grant from, a, from the Affordable Housing Reserve for a seed funds for redoing the Cranberry Manor affordable housings, affordable housing. Cranberry Manor is down by the post office, yeah. down by the um, West, Wareham. West Wareham Courthouse. Yes, I know. It's 24 union units down there. It used to be two stories and they rented the three. I think, what, someplace like that. Yeah, so there's a walk down or whatever. There's 24 units there and they're looking for a 50,000 into support a particular project. And the one that we just voted on this evening is a 100,000 grant for the restoration of the Iron Works, chip, uh, Iron Works Smoke, Iron Works Smoke Stack. Down at British Landing, mm -hmm. oh, hundred thousand yeah. dollars, huh? Mm -hmm. To to redo that, I'm not looking for comments on it, but you wanted to know what the projects yeah. were. Those are our five. <laughs> those were our five articles that we have just finished proving this evening, and will be submitted for town meeting discussion. Because all we do is say whether or not the article or the project adheres to CPA funding rules. And leave it up to town meeting as to whether to support it or not support it. But you know, I I I have a question. Is is do we have any does C does uh, CPC have anything in there for Agawam at all this year? Nothing was submitted. They never, they never submitted anything. No, no, nothing came in. We got a late request to do work down at um, Bartlett. Pond, but it came in too late for discussion at this particular cycle. But there was nothing from Agawam or Red, 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 Red neither, neither of neither those. Of them, huh? No, nothing. So, does, does, the, the, does, does the committee take a vote on how they would, whether they would support the? These? No, all we vote on is whether or not the articles meet the uh, requirement of the, of the law. 
Can, can you forward us, um, can you forward me a, a copy of your, what you guys are going to put in? I don't have it. I don't even have it. Will they, if somebody, does somebody have it? it um, it's, will they have it soon? It will have soon. Uh, when Angie returns from her vacation next week, it will be completed. So it will, it will be to you before it's fine. I would say by the 10th. Great. Yeah. Yeah. What we were saying, what I was getting to before, is don't, don't wait for the last minute to, for us to send you an invitation. Because we know that your meetings are at the same time yeah. as we are. Yeah. So we're saying, you know, email Kelly and say, we will be available on such and such a time. Can you put us in your agenda? And if yep. it goes with the committee, we'll be happy to have you in at that time because we'd like to be able to, to know about this stuff as much in advance yeah. as we can, not try to cram you in at the last moment. But um, looking at our funds available, I said we just had over 700000 expected to be FY14. Um, I have the estimate from Mr. Foster, and I'm looking at a 30% grant request uh, match from the state. Last month, last year we got a 33%, so there's more funding available, but I'm still being very conservative and saying a 30% match by the state. Mm -hmm. So that gives us just over 700000 And prior to that, we have FY13 and in, in, in unused funds of about 900000 not talking reserves. And there's no, I understand that you have to set aside the reserves must mm -hmm. be set aside yes. in those categories. Yes. But there's no mandate to spend the money otherwise. Correct. We can save it up for a big project when we're ready to go Could ahead and do well. something. Could very well. Example, um, we have probably, with this uh, article coming in, a hundred and, what does it say, 70,000 plus 60 something, uh, 125,000 left over in um, open space. Or, which we could have applied the 30000 against, but I chose to apply it against our unallocated leftover from FY12 and earlier. Uh, we don't have to use our reserves. We put them aside. It doesn't have, they don't have to be used until there is a particular project that we want to expend using the reserves. I have a question. Mm -hmm. might be out of line or whatever. Can the town or community committees, um, or if the mm -hmm. charter allows it, what if we got rid of CPA? What happens to the 700,000? Can it go into the general fund? Nope. Where does it go? It would probably be used to pay off our debts. Yep. Oh, that's right. We have And we debt. cannot get rid of CPA as long as there's a debt pay pending. So that's a little thing. So that's how you survive. <laughs> Stay in debt. No, I'm just looking at the money. <laughs> we, well, we all survive. <laughs> Nothing personal. Yeah. I think there's probably 11 years left on the debt payment for Tremont Nail and, and Bryant Farm. Okay. Uh, sorry. Go ahead, Mr. McDonald. I, I'm always the bad guy, and I don't like to be the bad guy. There have been discussions in that, that to reduce the amount, uh, instead of a 3%, I believe it is, from was a surcharge on the taxes, there has been talk of reducing that. But one of the things that you have to consider is the state match changes as well. For the money that you do receive, if I'm correct. Correct. And then the other part of that is we do have debt, and we have to have at least cover the debt. That those are the things that if that's what you're asking. You, well, I'm not just, just I just was just questioning, just yeah. just it's, threw it out there in the air. Just good, wanted to know. But, but because we at three, may I? Because sure. we are at three percent, everybody gets the first pass of money, one percent, two percent, three percent. Then those that have two to three get a second pass of money. Then those that are at three percent get the third pass of money. So we may have had thirty-three percent last year, but a town that had one percent may have only received ten percent, twenty-eight percent, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Some towns get a hundred. It depends on what type of history they've had right. with a particular project. Like you know, a little town like Gosnog is that the one down at Cuyunk? Could have a hundred percent match, but something like Cambridge could be much lower. Mm -hmm. you know? it's, it's a it's difficult in, in our meeting because here we are talking about not having any capital for police cars, repairs, mm -hmm. and and, and, you get all this and, money. and then you're flushed with cash. So, and it's nothing personal. I'm just saying that that's the situation we deal with, and it's and I understand before you get into you know. I, I saw seven hundred thousand. My eyes lit up. I, yeah, I know you can spend that. Don, no, <laughs> no one likes to spend money more than I do. Believe me. Um, but, but I'm listening to you talk about living within your means and living within your budget. We all know that living within this budget isn't really living. This living within this budget, we make it sound like there's fat to be cut. There's no fat to be cut in here. Well, there's we always fat. Don't get me started. Always fat. But 
and then okay, I know we'll look at this pool. Of, this then we look at this pool of money and say we can do, and I won't pick out a project here, but there are things that we can do that may not be so smart. What we really need to do is the same thing that we've all talked about. We need to have a comprehensive plan for this town. There is yeah. money here that we can use for good and valuable projects for our senior housing. Yeah, um, we should be used, tapping that every year. There, yeah. there are things that it can be used for that really can improve the town. But instead, and this is, not, again, obviously not a reflection on you, or your committee. It just, we lack any kind of comprehensive plan as how to incorporate this CPC funds in with our general budget so we have a, an idea. Now, now can I finish? <laughs> I'm actually, that, that's my problem is because when I sit here and think, well, if we cut this, we're going to get that. But maybe you put a recreation park in one of our open spaces and you attract people and therefore you have maybe a revenue coming in from that. People do eat, whatever. The other thing, I, I, we, we don't just lack a comprehensive plan. We lack a plan. I mean, past the point that they're out there, we don't have any plan. <coughs> Committees don't work together. <coughs> nobody's bringing it all together. It, it, and it's sad because, you know, I, I see under there, they have open space. They have, they have all these working together. You know, senior housing, we have senior housing needs. We hear about them all the time. I mean, we sit here, you know, we, we hear about them all the time, but why are they not coming to these people? So we don't even have a basic plan for, for using and they have money. But I also, you know, it's, Don't make it, that public. <laughs> well, I just did. Well, it's, we may have the money, but we really would prefer people to give us their grant requests as opposed to creating our own. Right. I mean, okay. just, that's, that's not, our I'm job saying. is to accept what people submit to us right. and not right. create our own. But I know before you go, may I, may I just add something to it? Uh, the Affordable Housing Trust last year authorized funds to be spent on the consultant to, to create a um, housing production plan for the town of Wareham since ours expired. We are going before the Board of, of uh, Selectmen on um, the 5th of February for their approval of this plan and in it is a whole bunch of strategies, including the use of CPA funds for affordable housing. So I'm hoping that with this acceptance of the plan, we'll have to submit it to the state. But here is an attempt to get a better understanding of what we have in housing, what we need in housing, and then going forward with more. Sorry. No, I'm just, I, I'm, I just wanted to make up a point, and um, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, Getting rid of CPA isn't going to allow us in any way, shape, or form to increase the amount of taxes. Oh, we lose this money. Collect. That's that's it. Exactly. So it, it's nice to say, okay, okay. there's seven hundred thousand dollars over there, but we can't in any way get that from the town in, in any other fashion uh, to increase our, our tax revenue at this point. We're we're under the law that we're under the law, and that's all we're going to get. So using it wisely in areas that we can in the town um, is a smart way to go. And I'm, I, you know, Dick Paulson in the years that I've spent with him did influence a few things in my mind, which is why I started to ask the question in the first place. And that is grant money is all well and good, but if you use grant money to start something and you can't finish it or maintain it, yeah. it does you no good. No, it's just pet peeve. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Barring any further discussion on this matter, if we can move on. Um, well done. Thank you very thank much, you, thank Andy. You. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you. Okay. Anything on capital planning? Well, the capital plan is presented in the plan. Is capital plan. Okay. It's really, but we do know that uh, Chief is leaving for three mm -hmm. and his radio. And question on radios, and they were not in the plan. Okay. All right, um, we want to look at the, re can we move on to review the town meeting? Well, the school transportation is on the agenda too. Oh, I thought we covered that. We did? No. Okay. Oh, okay, Mr. Heath. Uh, That's okay. That's okay. I don't want to get out of here myself. Go ahead. All right, the school transportation committee did meet last Monday. Mm -hmm. All right, and RFP went out for bids on buses to see if we could privatize it. And I don't know if people are familiar, but we put out to them four different plans, four different scenarios. The first scenario was to the whole ball of wax. 
everything, including athletics, events. That was bad, everything. Right. The second ones that went out were reduced service plans. It was the second and third item, both of which were reduced service plans. And you know, very complex in each one of the plans as to which grades would be involved in these, all those types of things. And, you know, we don't need to go over to find out why in a second. All right, and the last plan was to um, sure. put uh, you know the buses out there, but uh, retain uh, the field trips and the athletics and all that. And as they scale down, uh, copy of the first. All right, uh, there were eleven inquiries for the RFPs. All right, the RFP went out uh, from from the school transportation under the guidance of the town administrator and review of our legal counsel. There was a, a pre bid conference that was held uh, so that they could ask questions and some minor changes made. Uh, key one being the amount of liability insurance that was in the original uh, RFP. And we had seven companies attend that. All right. Uh, when it came to the day of opening up the bids, there were three responses. One was, no thank you. The other one was from our uh, first student, and it was, it was one by uh, Durham. Uh, one of the things in the RFPs was not to consider fuel. And the reason for that is, is they pay, if they buy the fuel, they have to pay the state tax. <coughs> so no matter what, whether we did it ourselves or we did it with, you know, they did it with us, we buy the fuel so we wouldn't have to do that. So we had to take their bid and add in the fuel costs okay. to make it an apples apples comparison with what it's costing us. All right, so first student, bid, their bid was for uh, $2,255,000 plus the $140,000 that we spent for gasoline. So their total bid was $2,395,000. Their bid, $2,159,000, right, with the $140,000 means their total bid was $2,299,000. On this, if we look at what it's costing us right now, the first thing they have to do is, oh, not, before I get off that, that is the first option only. The other three options they refuse to bid on. The first option was everything, That's right? That's all. Everything right. included. Okay. Now, that also means if we did that, that we would lose all the revolver funds, which is $225,000. They would want everything in. You know, the field trips and athletics would be inclusive. It would be extra charges. That's the way life is. All right. On our side, the current number that's out there in the, in the transportation budget is 1 6. That includes the 255 being used for maintenance. That 255, the school said they would use for replacement of buses. So they were looking at four buses a year. If you use the 255, that means an additional 115 would be needed. So you take the 1 6, add the 115,000, and then there's also $95,000 worth of fringes on our current drivers. Okay, so basically, uh, the 1601 truly is 1816. If you compare that to the Durham bid, to go to privatize it using Durham because they were the low bid would cost us an additional $480,000 per year. Cost of more than that if you add the 250 back in that we get. Well, that's for the buses. So yeah, the 250 is yeah. in there. Okay, when I said it. capital is 115. It's actually 400. Or, or, I'm sorry, 340. And they're looking at replacing four buses. But we would still, at that point, we still have that revenue. That revenue would be dedicated to buying right. the buses. So, so it's only, right. It, it's included in the 160 number I gave you. Mm -hmm. Because what it's being used for now is all types of maintenance and okay. stuff. So. That makes sense. Okay. So, so we. Overall, it's still uh, in the best interest to, to stick with doing it ourselves. Is what the uh, well, financially, that's financial. just the way to do it. Mm -hmm. No, I don't. All right, now, pardon? I'm not sure I agree, but go ahead. You, unless oh, you have a half yeah. million dollars? I'm not saying okay. that. I mean, it's okay, hold on, hold on, people, hold on. Finish, finish up, and then we'll ask questions. Well, that, that's on the bidding. There was also, you know, the, if we maintain ourselves, our own fleet, Mm -hmm. There are ways to cut down the services, all right, um, and they are also looking at that. The problem with cutting the services is who gets transportation and who doesn't, all right, and the way the legislation reads, 
um, is that it's there's one mile, one and a half miles, and two miles are involved in it, all right? It's uh, from door to door. So you don't take a map and draw a circle. It's from follow the road. So the maps look really crazy. I have copies here, you can look at them later. And what you're going to get in neighborhoods are split. Uh, you know, if you're talking everybody under a mile is going to have to walk to school. We don't have crossing guards these days because we don't have any walkers. Everybody rides. Barely have sidewalks. All right? And if you look at where the mine in uh, the, uh, the mine and the Deacus, as well as even, even this school down here, are located, you're going to need crossing guards. So that's an expense that isn't even involved in any of this. Mm -hmm. It has to go to the police chief to get that. But you do have neighborhoods being split down the middle. One neighborhood, because of the roads, falls within the proper distance, and the next neighborhood over doesn't because the road takes a twist or turn or something like that. It's not just drawing a map. The maps are the Probably, uh, you will not believe what's going to happen. The other side is, who enforces, remember we have the whole issue of reduced lunch mm -hmm. and free lunch would not have to, uh, <laughs> they couldn't be charged any fees, so if we try to put a fee system in, then you're going to have a problem with who pays and who doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, any cuts that we make, we could have families with one child would be eligible for bus transportation and another wouldn't. It's just, if you think it's bad trying to figure out mm -hmm. whether to, to lease the buses or stay with the system we have, and you start looking at that, mm -hmm. all right? And the person, uh, my statement is that it will not be the superintendent that will take the hassle. It will not be the school committee that will take the hassle. It will not be the <coughs> department of uh, transportation manager or the town administrator. The person that's verbally going to take the abuse is going to be the bus driver. Yeah. Every time. They're going to have to make daily decisions as to who's allowed to get on that bus and not. That's going to be tough. Now, one question I have put to the schools is, I would like to know how many towns have um, schools with 700 children in because it appears what, which is what our elementary schools have. Yeah. All right, um, most cities and towns don't have that many kids in the school. It's far short, and there's lot less walking distance. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, and like I said, if you just look at the map around each of the two elementary schools. I see, and look at major intersections, you're probably talking at least four crossing guards for each one, or over time for police, one or the other. So, yeah, there's still, that's that's why they're coming back tonight, mm -hmm. they're not going to reduce services when it comes down I, to it. I, I have a question, and I just, I was just kind of uh, mowing it through my head. How does the upper cape, on the high school level only, how did they get away with, uh, bus stops in certain areas, and kids kids have to get to those bus stops. Regional, they, they have a different set of laws than we do. Yes, yeah, it's a, a much different set of laws now like that, but this this is involved in that too. But they, they also most of our kids here have to find their own transportation to the school. Basically, the busing is in the town of Horn. That's it. No, we have buses. Yeah, we have buses, but, but we, you know, we have all their transportation is paid for by the state. I, would, I was just curious how they get, because, you know, where my granddaughter goes is at the library. She goes to the library and there's kids from all around well, the It's your job to get them to the stop. Exactly. Right. The stop right. to, the, to uh, the other location is. Uh, that's a simple case because the state pays for it. I okay. disagree that the state pays for it because if you know, I was sat in this meeting last year and saw our numbers go up and one of the things that they had in there was the busing. But so, they got a reimbursement from oh, the state. Yeah, some of it they did. Some of it, not all of it. All right, you, you, have, your question. Question. Yeah. you, you had the first question. Go ahead. Uh, well, I'm just going to throw this out here because I'm going to play devil's advocate and Rex is going to get mad at me and that's okay. Um, you mad at anybody. I, don't, I, I don't care. I mean, you're talking 18, 18, 18, 6, you said. Oh, eight. 198 is what it costs. 198. 198. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, I missed a zero. Um, <laughs> um, but that, that number is a one year figure. That number is not the next five to ten years of replacing equipment that's already beyond replacing. No, okay. That includes four hundred thousand dollars a year for equipment replacement. That includes four hundred thousand dollars a year yes. for buses. And how many buses is that? That's four buses. That includes four buses a year. Yes. 
Now those buses do not have to be brand new buses. They could be buses bought at the end of their three year leases from other systems. Mm -hmm. That's one of the advantages of being one of the only towns left uh, that is running their own system. Mm -hmm. Buses are available. Um, and this is this is a comprehensive plan that, that they're willing to institute that they can find the funding for, or there's a funding mechanism for this sort of a plan. They're not funding anything. This is the town. Is this funding. is the town's problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're presenting an alternative. That, you know, they they have to since they have the routes, etc. It's very difficult for the town administrator to go out and request an IAP, and then he has to get the routes and all the other data from them. So, as I said, he worked with them, and the Department of Transportation went out and got the bids. Okay. Go ahead, Tom. Oh, I'm Here's sorry, Tom, Dominic, you were first. Frank, you mentioned that there was um, $480,000 difference. But you had said earlier, but that's not for everything, correct? You said that field trips and all that were going to be addition, additional? Those would be additional. Okay, so by our number that you came up with, points. the 180, um, 180 1.8 included 8. everything, am I right? That includes, right. Yeah. Okay, so you have 480,000 so plus. Well, we don't know what that plus is, am I right? That's what I want We don't know what the plus is. Okay, so it's more than half a million. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what I want to. Well, thank you. Okay, did, Tom. Does it, did they show you enough in their bids so that you could determine how they're, why they're almost 30% higher than did the self? Did show enough bids? The, the bidders. I mean, did they, did they I didn't give you enough? I can't say not. I know that the RP was in their detail. Is it, the problem I have digesting is how we can be 30% more efficient in running buses than a firm that's set up to run buses. We're not making the profit. Yeah, but they're not uh, making a 30% profit. Why not? Uh, okay, yeah. I mean, Go ahead, Mr. John. There are several ways that we can be more efficient, and I don't want to use the word efficient, but the issue here is they're going to immediately come in with their own buses, which is obviously a a much less aged fleet, so you have a higher cost of depreciation or whatever. They have, a, they have that. On top of that, our bus drivers, if I'm correct, aren't getting benefits because they're part-time bus drivers, where the bus drivers well, are why can't, the, why can't the, the other firm use part-time bus drivers? Well, that may be a contract situation. My point is, the bids came in and they're 485000 and if plus. We, plus. For plus. 480 plus. We can't even afford what we have now, or we're not working. So no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so just curious. It just seems like a I don't think it's efficiency. I think it's a, if you look at the actual structure of what we do versus what they're doing, they probably have much better equipment than we have. Number one, and their bus drivers are probably getting benefits. Number two, and you know they're going to make extra money off the thing. That this is a good deal for them, but that's that's both those two people out of eleven that show up that tells you nobody really wants this because it is cost intensive to them. So yeah. maybe it's just us. There's also things that we can do as far as the life of the buses. Because right. we're deciding the life of a bus basically is 10 years. Mm -hmm. We could also find us over five years, et cetera. Right? These bus contracts are limited through to three years by law. So they have to exactly. recover their bus costs in three years. Got it. Now they can have a salvage value. When they okay, I, did, I just wanted to yeah. get a better yeah. impression. Yeah. And yeah. the other part of it is... The is benefits, by the way, is a big, is a big deal. It is if we paid our drivers the benefits that they're paying their drivers, right, which are not the best benefits in the world, they admit, then we probably would be paying the same amount of money. I don't understand why they can't use part-timers. I mean, Walmart uses part-timers. We can't tell them how to run. We can't business. tell them how to run. They run their yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the other part is, that given the one mile, okay. two mile thing, if we looked at, at neighborhoods and said, okay, we want to shorten the bus routes, so all of you students go to here to get to meet the bus, rather than street to street to street, as they as you as you, as you go down and follow some of these school buses. It's ridiculous. I don't. I don't want to. Get, I don't and, want to get into. Well, I can also answer the question. You know, basically, when they're doing their stops, I mean, it's not like they're doing 42 detours unless there's special needs. Oh. All right? You know, like in my neighborhood, there's two stops, and so everybody has to walk down into those two stops. Okay. All right? The problem is these buses have to cover 210 miles, pretty much. Mm -hmm. 
All right, the only thing you can eliminate is what the state says you don't have to support, which is anything beyond grade six. All right, then you have the problem of where are the sidewalks? <coughs> How many sidewalks are there? And are they on both sides of the road? Or when I cross an intersection, do I have to go from one side to the other? There's, there's lots of lots of complications that really aren't even considered. So they haven't it, talked in great detail as to what the Walker situation would be. The, the, uh, and that's going to that's cost money. It's not going to be for free. And, you know. Self-reliance and exercise well, is also like, part of well, you know, I, school. I, 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 I'm you know, sorry. I, I'm going to make a statement on the home internet channel because I, I walked to school my entire life. Me too. I, I walked to school my entire life, okay? But it, it was, was not. But when I was young, it wasn't, my parents didn't walk me and cross me across every road. There were traffic guards. I used to thumb else. the school. It was not for free. There was a transportation cost. There was a, you know, the cost of my shoes, but then also all the safety things that were put in place mm -hmm. to make sure that I would arrive there having to cross major roads and stuff. We don't have that here. This, this one mile sounds great. Oh, I walked a mile. Yeah, but what was the environment you walked in? They were all sidewalks where I walked. Mm -hmm. All right? I we don't know. have sidewalks in this town. Yes. <laughs> well, that's, I mean, there are other costs. It's like unintended costs. It's like you brought up with this. You can tell me why not, but I would like to try it and see. Do it. Make this thing run for 1.2 million. Just go. Figure it out. This is safe. See what they would do. Yeah, you say you well, want to try that's it. Well, that's an that's, that's subjective. That's experimentation. It's subjective. That's experimentation. What I asked was to take the maps. And you want three hundred twenty-five thousand dollars for books? Let's you keep this. Buses? Let's keep this. All right. In the request. Order. What else came out of this meeting was to take these maps, to go and sit with the chief of police, and find out. All right. After we identified where the sidewalks were, where crossing guards had been placed. Then the question was, how many? You know, where are we, where are we getting the cross guard, crossing guards? Where are we getting the volunteer and, crew? Et cetera. No. <laughs> That happens. That, that, that's not anything yeah. that you can fall back on. <laughs> so that's that's one of their their charges right now is to find out what it would cost to have these kids walk. And they're not, you know, because it's not in these numbers. It's not going to be cheap. And it's it, you know. And the signage that has to be done is a whole myriad of things. That we happen. we can say everything we want and what we did and what we did, but the times are different than when we were. Well, these there's questions bunch, also came up. There's um, a yeah. Uh, uh, there's a bunch of. Uh, Undesirables that we didn't have not people even that. Predated, you know, you're, going you're, after the small children. Not even that. We're just talking about the general safety. Do we have the sidewalks so the kids can walk? No, we, we have not, the yeah. painting of the lines on the road such that when they're in there, mm -hmm. the drivers have to stop, etc. The answer is in very few roads in this entire town. We have that. Exactly. That would have to be bought. All right. We have the problems of municipal maintenance, admitting that well, we don't have the sidewalks. They're not maintaining. You know, the side of the road either. That would have to be taken care of. There are un there are unintended con yeah, there's unintended consequences here once you start doing that walking. All right. The other side is is once you have this amount of walking traffic, you are going to have congestion at the schools, which are going to require police coverage, et cetera, just for traffic reasons. So, and like I said, there's also the signs. Yeah, they have the flashing lights and the speed signs and all that. Unless we have anything new, can we move on? Is anybody has a new point? I just want to make one point, and that and better that, be new. It, well, no, it, it's an old point, but I'm going to say it again. Um, I think that this, it, the plan, as if structurally, uh, to include four replacement buses a year, um, I hope that um, with support of the town administrator that we can find the funding to stick with the plan. That is my only fear, that it's the same story that I was handed five years ago that didn't follow through. We have a lot of bus right now. Okay. Yeah. Um, that if we, if we say, okay, we're not going to go public, or we're not going to go to a private agency, we are going to manage this ourselves. This town has to make a commitment to follow through with the plan. There is no putting it off and saying, we'll, oh, we'll buy the buses next year. And then five years down the line, they still haven't bought the buses. Madam Chair, if I may, I don't think anybody disagrees with what you said, Bonnie. That's what the Transportation Committee is advocating and trying to point out. I hope so. The problem is, it, when it comes <coughs> on the privatization, you have to come up with that additional 500 dollars every year. Exactly. So actually, they're proposing an alternative, which will save, if nothing else, you know, 
it's only 300 to buy the buses, mm -hmm. right? You'll pay 500 to not buy the buses and not, you won't have the service levels that you have right now exactly. because you don't have control of the buses. You don't have them for emergencies. You don't have them for vets. You don't have them for Marilyn, a bunch of things. you want to give us your final, our final thought on this? Well, actually, it was just a, a conversation that I had with members of the general public, um, all one of who was a former chair here, who had the um, idea, he talked about the walking bus, which covered some of the safety issues. Apparently, there is a um, group in town South Coast Hospitals, the Y, who are talking about healthier students. And that's where it should come from. It shouldn't come from this board, the school committee. It should come as a community group. So as far as we're brainstorming on those wonderful ideas, there are people that hopefully okay. will bring it up. So All it's right. being covered. Can we move on? We're moving. We OK. Capital planning, we let nothing, all right? Just speak about it. OK. Review the town meeting deadline. Okay, we all, Kelly has provided us with that. So we'll get on to what well, we should, so we should be getting, um, when will we be getting the article? We should. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping to get on the 13th. Okay. Yeah, the select will close the war. Okay. So hopefully, so okay, so hopefully right in here, mm -hmm. we, we would get the one. So we're looking around March 13th, which is not we don't have that far to go. Okay. And hopefully before then we could get a heads up of anything that's been submitted. Exactly. You know. Exactly. We we know that the five are we mm -hmm. got a heads up on those five articles too, so mm -hmm. okay. Anyone have any questions about the dates? A lot of work in front of us people. All right. Any new business? No. Yes. Uh, one of the things that came up in the second meeting last night was how uh, fun the article that capped the uh, school of at eighteen thousand dollars. The question came up as, as far as retained areas were concerned, and whether to express the opinion either way. It was, and that's why I made sure that everybody had a copy of the enterprise fund. Mm -hmm. I, I highly recommend that you read this. It's going to become an important issue, and I, uh, particularly since there's very the enterprise fund laws have very strict guidelines as to what certain things can be used and how they can be used. All right. So it's and like I said, it's really important that you do your homework on this one because this issue probably is going to come up as to where. The money's going to come from, and is it going to be total town? Is it going to be uh, out of the enterprise fund? And if it's out of the enterprise fund, uh, what's the source of the money within the fund itself? All right, and that's really what is probably going to be the most ticklish item because mm -hmm. if it comes out that, this, that it's going to be the enterprise fund has to cover that money. How is that? I'm sorry, I just got, I gotta get it off my chest. How is that fair? I mean, we have gone through this how many years? We're two town meetings over this particular thing. So all of us who paid our betterments, those retained earnings are in there, and we've got to pay for this. All right, one of the things that did happen last night, by the way, was that request was made by Select Ms. Lady to find out, we really have laid out for us, where do the funds come from, and you know what are they supposed to be used for? So we lay it all out on the retained earnings so everybody understands it. If you pull our audit report, you'll see a huge retains earning number, mm -hmm. right? And you know you hear sewer fund, sewer enterprise fund, water pollution control fund, and all kinds of them, names mm -hmm. and titles and stuff like that. So there's going to be an effort to try to clear all that up first as to where it all comes from, where it all goes. There's also the question of what's free cash in the enterprise fund, 
Right, what does that mean? And what's happening is that some items are in more than one category. Mm -hmm. Free cash is actually part of retained earnings. Right? It's just a matter of one is the result of profit and loss statement and the other is the result of you know, a balance sheet. And cash is part of retained earnings. And, that's in the butts. and there's another side as to what is restricted and what's unrestricted. Right, who restricted it, when did they restrict it, and also why does it exist? In some cases, <coughs> you have retained earnings that exist because you have full payment of future debts, and monies have to be reserved, etc. So I guess all that's going to be straightened out. But it's just going to be one of these processes that, I mean, we really have to do our homework before somebody comes mm -hmm. in and starts talking so we can ask the right questions. You can't ask the questions no. unless you have some background. Mm -hmm. If we need to work together on this or have a, a workshop exactly. somewhere along the line where we can sit around and talk about it so that everybody comes to an understanding of the accounting. Uh, and I think we need to do it because it, I is, agree. it is very confusing, <coughs> even for people who are in the financial world. It is. Right, this whole idea of appropriations, et cetera. Mm -hmm. There's also some guidelines in here on how the state the Department of Revenue would like to see you budget your water pollution control, or your enterprise funds and how you monitor the spending of those, et cetera. So I really think you need to mm -hmm. read over this because that might be the decision. Do we want to follow the DOR or do we want to stay where we are? Lots of questions there. Maybe, maybe we should um, we, we should uh, put this on the agenda, on our agenda for next time, to, and make sure that everybody's gone through this and read this in detail. Because we'll discuss with them yeah, no, uh, workshop. I, exactly, whether we should have a workshop. and. Um, I, I, I don't think anybody, anybody at this table disagrees with you, Bonnie, that it's unfair. But we also know that the town meeting voted for it. I know. I mean, but most of them are. But, but now, wait a minute. Before you get going, almost, since you're right down, the town voted for it. It shouldn't have been voted for by the town because a lot of the town people who vote don't have sewerage and don't put it to the fund. Right. So I why are you know. voting for something you don't have nothing to do with? That's been I, 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 agree, I agree with you 100%, Dominic. I know you Dominic, do, I'll put it you know, out there in the air because the, I'm, the, I'm the moving over is it. We had our selectmen, our former selectmen, created this. How do we go pay sewerage? No. Yes. You know, you know, that's beside the point. It, it's, okay. it's wrong, wrong, wrong. And I want to, I, I want to clarify. We're getting away from what I raised. Not what I raised was we need to do the homework. These conversations exactly. need to come up again. Exactly. Yeah. I'd rather save them for one more. Oh, I'll save them. Have more back. Five million. It's a five million dollar business. We can really beat the homework. Six. Six million dollars. Six million dollar business. Let me run it. It was a five million dollar business. All right. Order, order, order. And let's do it over the phone. 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 Let's do it Valid point, Mr. McDonald. You know I have valid points. Do I not always have valid point? The DOR a few years ago came back with a report because there were funds in the enterprise fund retained earnings that were used in a fashion that the DOR had re recommended that they not be used. If you remember this report, I, I wasn't even on your committee at that point. We were. We and were. I, we I, were. I, yeah, but I stood up and said a few things about it uh, because that's that's when I started reading this report. And when you go through this report, it is confusing in a couple of places. But the reality is, we don't even know where some of those funds belong. That has to be cleared up. They're, they're not appropriately classified in some cases. It was used as a slush fund, the one that the town for years. If I may respond to Mr. McDonald, it is very true that the, we, we are not necessarily clear in our definitions and such. All right, part of what we also have there, you think you're talking about the administrative fee, all right, this pamphlet will talk about there are administrative fees to be charged beyond the health care benefits. Exactly. And they impact the finances of the town. So again, but I don't want to discuss any of that or try okay. to scope around to this. And so everybody had a chance to read this. Well, well, I, their questions. I was reinforcing you Friday. Well, well, Mr. 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 I would ask that everyone, Thank you. I would ask that everyone <laughs> Uh, read, it. read it this week. We'll put it on next week's agenda. Put it on next week's agenda. Because it is important. <laughs> if I okay. get to it. <laughs> All right. Do we have any. Um, I'm going to be gone this Can week you get it today? To we don't have any more liaison reports, do we? Yeah, give it to Bonnie. She can give it to you. Do we have any more liaison reports? No? Okay. We don't. Uh, I entertain a motion to approve the minutes of January 9th. So moved. Second. 
Can I just here? Can I make a motion? No, it wasn't. I just don't. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstention. Okay. And I abstain too. Yes. Yeah. Two 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 All right. The next meeting time day will be a week from tonight yeah. at six thirty, and we're going to make sure that we have an executive session in place yes, at that time. Yes. Put that on the agenda. And we will definitely make sure that Mr. Um, Mr. Heath will be running that meeting, please. Okay. The executive okay. session will we discuss contract. Contract. Exactly. Labor contract obligations under the budget. Okay. All right, now I will entertain a meeting for adjournment. Motion, I have no motion. Uh, so moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.